Hello everybody, this is Strange Gamer back to conclude round three with Group I. The group that seems to have all the one-sided matches. And well, you can tell that straight away because you've got two pointless combatants in this group. And none of the other groups can boast that, can they? But yes, some big gains in round three. Starting us off, Asterion going up against Zalos Ares. That could be a big game for Asterion there, yet to get going in this tournament. Yet to get off the mark in this tournament. And then a matchup I'm really looking forward to doing. Morsluck going up against Cryonova. Again, Cryonova really needs to get going in this tournament. Yet to get off the mark. And then we will see a clash at the top between Marissa Kurosame and Dark Ash Star. So, yep, let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with this matchup and let's conclude round three. And yes, I, <laughs> I already started the. Um, Dino introductions you have. <laughs> Oopsie daisy, but anyway, in the red corner for Astarion, we got a Decreosaur. Now, Astarion I thought would be one of the surprise packages in this tournament, and well, they kind of have, to be honest. Surprising in how bad they're doing. Okay, as for Zalos in the blue corner, it's a Ceratosaurus. Zalos getting back to winning ways after in round two after a disappointing loss in round one against Dark Ashtar. Can they lost back their last win with another? That would put them right in contention to finish top of this group, which is where I thought Zalos would finish, if I'm honest. But it doesn't look like they're going to finish top. As for Starion, very one-sided matches so far against them, so I hope they have better luck this time. It's a tie, it's a tie, it's a tie. There's the move breaker there. Ties can favour the Decreosaurus there because of the move breaker. Decreosaurus getting the first hit. Good start there from Asterion. Another hit. Ooh. Has Asterion's luck turned around in this tournament? Boosh. Zalos yet to get a hit on this in this match. And this Ceratosaurus is not going to get a hit. Astarion, for the first time in this tournament, I think, is going to be having a 1-0 lead. Oh, honestly, if Astarion wins 3-0 here, they deserve it. Because they've had horrible, horrible luck in this tournament. Alright, as for Zalos's second dino, it's a Tajongosaurus. This do not count Zalos out yet. Well, they almost came back to beat Dark Ashtar, let's not forget that. And the Black T-Rex was like on, on a tiny sliver of health and it killed two things. <laughs> Granted, they are death fire. <sighs> hey, Zaylos getting a hit! Zaylos finally getting a hit. It's not a big one, but at least it's a hit. Really needs to get a rock roller here. Oh, and he's not going to get it! Instead, the Decreosaurus is going to continue to chip away. Well, no shockwave yet, though. That's quite a surprise. Oh, that's a tie. There's the move breaker, though. Getting rid of the rock roller. That could be useful for Astarion. Ooh, the Tajongosaurus, though, does get off a hit. Zaylos slowly coming back into this match. Oh, there's another tie. Oops. Oh, it's a crit from the Decreosaurus. Oh, 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 it's dead. Well, all of a sudden, Asterion has a 2 0 lead. Usually they're 2 0 behind. But. Do not count Zalos out yet because, well, the third dino is the big bad black T-Rex. And well, this thing annihilated Dark Ash, nearly annihilated Dark Ash Star's team and is quite capable of doing the same to Astarion, so do not count Zalos out yet. Oh, it's a tie. Well, the Decreosaurus finally going down, thankfully for Zalos' sake, because I think would have had a type advantage. Oh, it's a Tajongosaurus! I forgot both of these guys got Tajongosaurus. Well, you've, you've just seared it from me. 
Astarion's second dino is a Tijongosaurus. Although, unlike Xelos's, it does not have Rock Roller. It has Earthquake instead. Oof, get, again, a bit of a headache, to be honest. But I will soldier on like the warrior I am. Oh, Xelos is in trouble. Yeah, I, I think Astarion is going to win their first match of this tournament. Elemental power there. Oh, but Xelos does get off a of Venom Fang, and this Black T-Rex does have quite a good, good amount of attack to it. So, even though it's not a crit, it will this Venom Fang will still de deal some damage, and it will poison the Tijongasaurus. So even more damage will be dealt. Can Xelos get back in this match? A crit here would really put him back in this match. Oh, he's not getting it though. I'm gonna, I might sneeze. Ooh, Tijongasaurus getting a hit. Ooh, will we see Deathfire? Well, it's been triggered. Will Xelos get it off? Oh, he's not! Astarion getting the bonus point win. Getting the job done. And the Black T-Rex misses his opportunity to land a Deathfire. Well, that's more like it if you're a Starion. Finally getting their first win of the tournament and getting themselves right back in the mix. As for Zalos, well, it didn't really get going to be honest. It was quite stuttery, but they'll bounce back. But Astarion finally getting off the mark. Right, well, on to the matchup that, well, I'm anticipating the most in this video and pretty much the most anticipated match for me in round three. And that sees Cryonova taking on Morslet. Okay then, here we go. In the red corner for Morslet, it's a Yantronosaurus. I should point out that Morslet has two type advantages in this matchup. This is not a good matchup for Cryonova. So I feel like Mors is going to win quite handsomely, but, you know... I've been wrong many times before, and I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong again. In the blue corner for Cryonova, under massive pressure now to get a win in this tournament, given the first result, we have Neovenator. This Neovenator, well, I haven't seen the best of it yet. Let's just say that. Dun 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 dun. Well, are there any saving graces for Cryono? Well, they have a Dino Tech, so that's the only saving grace I, I can give him. Oh, there's a tie. Well, that's not good, though, because the Burning Dash is going to get triggered. Oh, Neovenator getting the first hit. Going to need quite a lot of those hits to take this beast out. <laughs> well... It's getting another hit. It's get, it, it really needs a crit, though. It needs to get a crit. As long as more stops the or getting crits, then I'm pretty confident that the Yang Chungosaurus will win this matchup. Honestly, I'd say Ty's helped the Neovenator more at this point. The Burning Dash is already triggered, so can't avoid it. Well, it's Alpha Dart time. Not the... Well, it depends on what the Dart lands on. If it lands on a stuffed toy, then I'd say that is a result for Cryonova, and that, my friend, is not a result for Cryonova. It is the Alpha Droid, although, could have been worse, it could have been Dino Man. But nonetheless, more striking back with her first hit of the match. And also tough. I'll tell you what, this new Venator is not doing too bad. But as I said, it needs to get crits, but this Yantronosaurus is just not going to let it get a crit. And well, it had a good run. But, unsurprisingly, Neovenator is going to die. Oh, boosh. A, cust a trademark move from the Yang from the Source of the Burning Dash. And, unsurprisingly, Moors has a 1-0 lead. But Crownover can pull it back with this Kakiridontosaurus. Can pull it back. But, needs to make sure this Yang from the Source doesn't land too much damage. Otherwise, again, as I said, Moors will probably win this match comfortably. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Come on, then! 
Oh dear. Is this where Moles turns the screw? It might be. It might be. Um, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I th I th yeah, I think Maul is going to win now. But it's a tie. Okay, it's Alpha Dart. This is not the worst case. If it doesn't, as long as it doesn't land on the dart, on the um, the ball, the draw. If it lands on the stuffed toy, then that's not too bad. And it lands on the Alpha Droid. So you know what that means. This car is going down. And Morse has a 2-0 lead. Well, from being a, from winning comfortably, Morse could literally could win 3-0 here. Although, do not count Crown over out yet. They do have the Dino Tech turn. Well, he's going to need it. If he wants any chance of getting anything out of this match, he's going to need the Dino Tech turn. Put it that way. He needs to get hit for a start. The young Trungosaurus is cleaning house. Tie. But again, well, the bar fills up, but ties favour the Yang. Well, another fire cannon. Wow. It is literally a massacre at this point. Like, the new Venator got off hits, but it didn't get off any crits. Like, that would have made the difference. If it got off like, one crit, would have killed the Yang. Oh, there's another tie. Well, there's a losing bonus point for Moors. Tight. Come on, can't cry on over at least take this Yang down. He's gonna take it down and get a light recovery. Well, there's a consolation prize for you, cry on over. You at least take, took down the Yang. You at least didn't lose free. Uh, and you know, Dino Tech is full, so if but I better get the codes out, just in case. Although based on this match, I don't think he's gonna get Dino Tech though, anyway. But you never know. Right, as for Morse's second dino, it's a Spinosaurus. And they'll probably win Moore's a bonus point when it defeats Parapara. Although, as I said, Parapara's got the dino tactic. Do not count Crown over out yet. They can get back in this match. Oh, we are going to see Dino Tector, so you know what that means. I got into the codes. Dino Tector, on. Well, this could be it for Crown Over. Can they get this hit? If they can get this hit, put them right back in this match. Oh, he got that. I mean, I don't think it's going to be lethal for the Spinal, but at least Crown Over is showing some defiance. Against the mountain that is Mors. Boosh. Yeah, no surprise there, didn't win. Well, all of a sudden, could Mors be getting nervous? From a completely comfortable and dominant position, Cryonova has turned it around. And well, didn't expect to see Pro Sorolophus in this match, but we're seeing it. Well, can more, can Cryonova snatch it? I should point out that with the Dino Tector on, Paris' moves will do a bit more damage. Well, I think they do a little bit more damage, even though the actual moveset is gone. The moves do do more damage. Oh! Oh my god, this could be... Yeah, this could... You know, like, Crown Oak could actually win this. Like, from a position of being absolutely dominated, all of a sudden... Oh, hang on, hang on, the Pro Sorolophus gets a hit. Well, Moors has guaranteed herself at least a losing bonus point, which she might actually get. Oh, now you do this random number generator, you arse. It's... The, the, the timing of this match is the key, and you're doing this. Right, we're back in business. So it's free. Oh, it's a tie! Oh, oh, the Dino Tech is loaded up again. 
Wow, look at this! Oh! <laughs> um... I, I, I am genuinely speechless. This, this might actually be the comeback of the tournament. <laughs> Well, um, I gotta say, how how is Cryonova somehow has won? Like uh, uh, that is in absolutely insane. That, my friend, is why Dino Tech the Dinos are awesome. Dead and buried at two 0 Hell, the Yang Trungosaurus needed one more hit, and Moore's probably would have won three 0 but completely out of nowhere, Cryonova comes back in this match to win. And how big could that be? That could be massive going forward in this tournament. Could that be a turning point for Cryonova? And Group I has definitely opened up after those first two matches. Both of our winless combatants in this group getting their first wins of the tournament. But wow! Cryonova, what a win, what a match. Can they kick on and do well in this tournament? You know, you will never know. But, well, no, well nothing is going to top that matchup, is it? But, you know, on to our third, third and final match of this session. And that, ladies and gentlemen, sees a clash, well, yeah, a clash at the top between Dark Ash Star and Marissa Kurosami. All right, in the red corner for Marissa Kurosame, it's a Fukui Raptor. It's been easy street so far for these two, both getting two wins out of two, and well, kind of comfortable wins to be honest. Never, re never thoroughly, thoroughly tested. But obviously, one of these two is going to have to lose, isn't they? In the blue corner for Dark Ash Star, it's a Metriacanthosaurus. The Metriacanthosaurus. Does have the type advantage against that Fukui Raptor, so it could be key. Metriacanthosaurus has been very impressive so far in this tournament for Dark Ash Star. We've definitely seen the damage it can do. Oh well, there's a crit right off the bat. And then and he's gonna do a lot of damage because again, the type advantage. There's a technique boost as well, so heat eruption will probably start activating. Should there be ties? Ooh, but the Fukui Raptor does get off a crit. And because the it, it wasn't a Mayfly, the crit will do normal damage. And there's a Cyclone as well. Cyclone, a good way to play around Dark Ash Dar's tie strategy. It's actually pretty much the perfect counter because you can attack during a tie. Which basically, which A, stops you dealing damage during the tie, and B, stops heat eruption. Perfect count, perfect counter, Cyclone is. Well, it's not going to stop this tie, but no heat eruption. Oh, there's another crit from the net, and the Fukui Raptor's going to bite the big one. Dark Ash Star, yet again, having a 1-0 lead. However, I think it will be staying a 1-0 lead because, as for Marissa's second dino, it's a super camera. We've definitely seen what this camera can do. It's a super duper camera, unlike my camera, which is a wildcard camera. Um, yes, I will, t I will talk about the tournament as well, because we have basically passed the halfway stage of the group stage, and, well, in fact, I think we've passed the halfway mark of the whole tournament itself, so... I am going to talk and review the each group so far in like a separate video, giving my thoughts. Like, if you would like to see that, I wouldn't. I would like to do that. Ooh, that's not good though for Marissa. But again, look at that type advantage coming through there in limiting the damage. Uh, Waker mode on two, by the way, and we're going to see it. The camera gets the hit. It won't be enough to kill the mech, but it's a wait, wait turn. Well, it's, it's an interesting one, because a tie here could trigger heat eruption, but 
a tie would be better because then the awakening mode wouldn't be wasted. Oh, well, it's wasted anyway. And it's a softening beam. So the Super Kama will take more damage during a tie. Ties will definitely favour Dark Ashtar now, but the Metriacanthosaurus is on quite low health. Oh, well, Ties did favour it until the Aqua Vortex happened. Oh, it was a tie as well, but the Aqua Vortex is going to prevent the Metriacanthosaurus from landing any damage. And in fact, Marissa Kurosame is pulling it back. Although it was a chance miss, the land damage will be awake and open. Nonetheless, the Metri Canvasaurus goes down, and Dark Ashtar will not be having a 2 0 lead. Speaking of the devil, as for Dark Ashtar's second dino, it's an Armatus. Well, we haven't seen too much of this guy. Well, we saw it quite a bit against Cryonova. Let's not, let's not make no mistake. Will we see Spectral Armor in this match? I, I doubt it, to be honest, because... Okay, if, if um, Marissa was leading, then I'd probably say yes, we would see... I We might see Spectral Armor. Ooh, the Kama getting a crit! And for those of you that don't know, this Kamarasaurus does have quite a powerful crit. Although, that, that's kind of what makes it not, not a great water dinosaur, because its crit is paper, and it's a powerful crit, and obviously... If you want to maximise a crit's power, you want it for water dinosaurs. You want it to be either rock or scissors. Well, ideally rock because Hydro Cut does more damage than Futaba can. But look at this! All of a sudden, Marissa Kurosawa again, right back in this match. And look at this! Oh, Armatus is well. Armatus died relatively quick, and all of a sudden, Marissa with a two-one lead, but it's a very slender one. Right, as for Dark Yashtar's food dino, it's a Uteraptor. Well, the Metric Ambazores did so well, then all of a sudden, Dark Ashtar playing catch up. But can this Uteraptor get the job done for him? Or can this Kama continue to land hits? Uh, well, the Kama had a good run, but it's dead. And we are level pet. I think this is the first time we're gonna see, we've seen this guy. I think. But for Marissa's third dino is a Pachycephalosaurus, and no, it's not the first time we've seen it. We have seen it before, or maybe not. No, I don't think we've seen it before. Well, yeah, in this tournament. Hmm. Well, we're gonna see it here, and it's gonna have to pull it, pull its weight if Marissa wants to win this match. Well, it's getting a crit. Who will win this matchup from here? Oh, I don't know. I think Marissa. I think Marissa has the momentum at the minute, so I think Marissa's gonna win. Yeah, I think Marissa's gonna win now. I think getting those two crits now, well, guaranteeing themselves at least a losing bonus point, but the Dino Illusion has been triggered. That will bring Dark Ashtar back in this. Well, it could bring him back in this. Not if they're getting off times. Is the move breaker there? I wonder. Oh, well. I was going to say. I wonder if if I get a tie with the rock. Will the move breaker nullify the dino illusion? I kind of want to find out. Maybe that's something I can test in another video. But look at this. Dark Ashtar getting back in this match. Although, because the secret moves were triggered. The Pachycephalosaurus does have the type advantage. Well, there goes Dino Illusion. That hit would have killed the Uteraptor, but Dino Illusion saved the day. How crucial could that be? Very crucial, because it's Alpha Dart time. Can Dark Ashtar win it with this Alpha Dart? Well, I'd say anything other than the uh, Teddy will win it. Yeah, that's definitely game. And Marissa Kurosame is going to be tasting defeat for the first time in this tournament. And it's all because of the power of Dino Illusion. Three out of three for Dark Ashtar. And based on the other two matches outcomes, I would probably say that's Dark Ashtar through. But, well, we'll, we'll find out when we look at the table 
now? Well, Group I looking very interesting all of a sudden. You have Dark Ash Star up top with three wins out of three on nine points. And then you also have Marissa level on points with Dark Ash Star, but Dark Ash Star is on top by virtue of the fact that, well, A, they just beat Marissa, and B, they have three wins over Marissa's too. So Dark Ash Star will top Group I. Marissa in second with three bonus points there on nine points. Morsla just clinging on into in third with six points after getting three bonus points. Wow, this is quite impressive. Three points. Six points with one win. That's quite that's quite efficient from Mors. And then you have Astarion shooting up to fourth there with their first win of the tournament. And then you have Zalos and Crown over stuck on three points. But wow. Group I has really opened up. Well, except for the top two, which I'm pretty sure that these two will go through now. Like, they, they are, what, six points clear of these two? And these two have to play each other next round as well. Make a note of that. So, yeah, well, a draw between these two would guarantee that these two will go through. And, well, whoever loses this match will probably be eliminated, if I'm honest. And then I believe... Next round it will be Dark Ashtar against Astarion. That could be a big game for Astarion there to close the gap on Dark Ashtar. And then it'll be Marissa Moors going up against Marissa Kirisame. So yeah, still all to play for in this group. Still all to play for, but I think, yeah, no. Yeah, that's, that is Group I, ladies and gentlemen. That is round three concluded. So, yep, I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for next time where we kick off round four for Group A. A, and until then, this is Stranger Gamer, signing out.